definitely thrived off that. But they're just like, okay, like, oh, I'm, just like, hurts me thinking about it. it. It's not like I'm gonna feed off your soul, but I'm like, I'm gonna take like a fine wine off of it. It'd be like, yeah, yes, yeah. that was that was enjoyable. <laughs> All right, so Razo sitting in Winterside, going to opt for the Daisy here, but what color palette? Daisy has so many amazing color palettes. Looks like we're going to have pink and red. All right. I think her, her the, the black and red one, that one's the best looking because it's like almost more reminds me one of those like flamenco like tango dancers. I, I like, um, I'm a fan of like the turquoise and purple one too. That one's nice. But here we go, the red Daisy versus the blue Belmont. The Belmont that could. Yeah. And that, that was a, uh, in terms of like seating wise, like T3 Dome, double eliminating Kong Kong, that's a, that's a pretty big win for him now. I mean, T3 Dome was seated third, I believe. So. Yeah, and then Kong Kong probably seated second. Yeah. All right, so starting things off on Pokemon Stadium 2. Um, of course, we talked about it before. Uh, Nitro is from the Inland Empire, so that is the sub-region that Razo is from as well. He's got a lot of experience versus character. I feel like Razo has a lot of experience versus zoners in general because I'm hip, you know, reigning from IE as well. So th this man has had to deal with zoners his entire Smash career. Or actually, no, he moved to IE like towards the end of Smash 4, but definitely his whole ultimate career. Yet again, here we go with Belmont. You know, I feel like T3 Dome's hot. You know, he's like, okay, I know my angles. Like, I'm feeling it. I know, like, my fingers are working. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I see Razo just struggling a lot more in this game than he was in the previous ones. Oh, there's a counter. I know you're going to throw something out. That down air on the shield is very good. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, like, a uh, Squirtle, like, side B on shield. Like, you think you can punish it, but then he just, like, jumps away, and you're just like, no, I can't punish yeah. it. Unless you have like an absurdly fast like up or something, but yeah, it's uh, very difficult. Okay, right there, T3 Dome taking the first stock. Down tilt. How is Ross going to get this blade trap? To hold? Wow, floating right over it, but he's not able to connect the fair to follow. Okay, here's another ledge trap. Trying to cover multiple options with the uh, the turn up and the nair. Okay, drop, dropping down with the fair. Gets be out of shield. You know, Razo just air dodging back on the stage, kind of avoiding all that. Yeah, Razo is uh, taking quite a bit of damage here, and Peter Dome does not look like he's ready to die. Yeah. Forward air, cross stage, finally. Yeah. But I mean, he paid the price. 57, now 77% here on Razo, and T3 Dome is not done with this momentum just yet. Ooh, oh, gets an man. axe. You know what the scary thing about that axe is? Like, you can combo axe in the forward smash because that axe has just that much hit. So then, <gasps> no, you get. What, what do you do? What he, do you do? He got hit by the Saturn. No, no, like, I, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I want. I was wondering if Razo was gonna, like, do a turn up combo or. Uh, you know what I mean? Because he's at zero, so. Yeah. I wonder what his, like, quote unquote, is. like, full damage output was. But. I feel like that was less damage than, like, what. A, Daisy player would normally get, you know, yeah. that was only like 39%. I feel like Daisy usually get like 67% off of a grab. He did have quite a lot of rage. Right. He had over 100% rage. I know that can affect the uh, the Princess combos quite quite a bit, especially at like dead zero. But just like that, even with the shield break, Razo didn't use the shield break to get the stock. So honestly, just wasn't super pivotal. Oh, oh wait. No, no. Oh. See, that's what I was talking he about He messed early. up the angle? Yeah, that's a messed up the angle. Because like, it looked like he fared straight forward, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, the straight forward fair, garbage, like, hitbox. Like, on, on the tether recovery. To snatch. To yeah. snatch, yeah. The angled one is, like, godlike. It's godlike. It's, like, twice as long, I feel like. Yeah. And a lot of people, like, even me, I thought that Belmont's recovery, like, was absolute garbage. Because, you know, you know, the first couple of months of the game, nobody was really doing the angled stuff. Right. Not that I could see, anyway. And then once I started seeing the angled recoveries, I was like, oh, wow, you can, like, mix up when you do it. Like, I don't just, like, always nair right in this area and get a free hit. Like, right. wow. And you know, Razo, like, we were talking about that shield break earlier, but Razo's shield is looking kind of small right here. And, no, I like what he's doing. He's, like, floating back, kind of, like, extending the time for his shield to grow back. Yep. Oh, directional air dodge right through. That was big damage for Razo, and he got him a good situation off stage. But T3 Dome coming right back in. But Razo hitting the fair. You know what? Almost getting the grab, but unfortunately, just going to run past him instead. You know, Razo picking it up off the, the bounce. Yeah. 
Off the backboard, man. Ooh, picking it off with the throw there. And Ooh. oh my god, I like Razo's item player. I mean, he does play Peach, which, oh my god, that could have been an up smash. Yeah, that. Uh, I wonder if Razo just wanted to like do something quick as possible. Right. You know what I mean? Just get the hit, cover both sides here. Get the damage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gets the parry, but oh, the dash guard doesn't get punished. The down tilt finally gets through the axe, the holy water into the fair, but not quite enough to get the stock. Here's the axe, and oh, it's just swinging over the, the holy water in the fair. The fair's gonna do it off the top. That was so smart from Razo. He grabbed the ledge, and he knew that he had enough time. Even if T3 Dome immediately threw the holy water, he would be like up in the air before the holy water would like ignite by the edge. Right. So that early ledge jump made it. So he hopped over the holy water. He initiated his float, got back down to the ground, and was able to get his footing and force him back. Called the jump. That was really, really nice microspace. And you know, T3 Dome's like shaking his head, being like, "I had that game if I didn't SD." Yes. You know? Yeah. That definitely sucks. But. Oh, there's the red and black yeah. skin you were talking yeah. about. The, the, that one's I, very nice. I like that. This is my favorite skin for DayZ. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, and the gray, like the the gray on the sides, too. I like the, the, the black gloves, too. Like, oh my god. It's yeah, just it's, such a nice skin. It is a very nice skin. Uh, I feel like Belmont's also have Ooh. good skins. Like, they have the, the black and gold one. They have the white and red one. Yeah. yeah. The, the original skin's pretty good, too. Yeah, the classic. Yeah. The classic skins are good. Like it, it's a uh, the the color palettes in general are very impressive in this game. Like the game just looks so nice. But right now, Razo kind of riding that momentum from game number one, and man, Ooh, gets a forward smash off of it. You know, so I, I like it. Get the damage. You know, throw him off stage. One thing that's nice about playing Princesses against Belmont is you have the option of projectiles, man. Right. Those turnips are so good. It's gonna be good off stage. And Wow, that was so clean. Dude, the down tilt of the raw bear? Like, yeah. oh my god. That might have even been like attack cancel bear, honestly. Like, because he just insta turnaround bear. Right. And that was just really, that was, that's such a good way to close out a stock that early. Oh my god. I, I like how he knew like that would hit too. Yeah, he was definitely ready for that. Oh, gets the grab, and you know what? There's the bear. No, I'm not quite at a low enough percent where you can combo further, but you know what? It's a nice combo. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, ooh, falling out the jump over the cross, and right now, Dudrome getting his footing, throws the axe the wrong way, but he gets the water. Ooh, but Razo using that side beat to close the gap. Ooh, calls out the jump from stage with the fair and throws the clear grab and the target snipes him. I like that little hesitation from Yes, Razo the too. little delay is the reason why he got that turn up uh, snipe, because you have to wait for the Belmont to like reel in too and then come in, uh, um, come in from underneath. So Razo's sitting real pretty, and we are definitely seeing what happens when Razo gets his offstage strategies going. Getting the snipes off stage, he's getting these arrows off stage, getting these turnips off stage. I feel like he's getting a lot more like commitment from T3 Dome, and he's just been whacking him in the air whenever he tries to throw out something. Well, yep, and right there, Razo fully understands when he can normal get up and when he can't normal get up. Like, I don't think I've seen Razo normal get up into an already active holy water which is something that I see a lot of people in SoCal do. I think that was his double jump. Yep. He ledge dropped double jumped and Razo just snuck, um, fared him. Yeah. yeah, fared him right there. That was pretty much a wrap and then the turn up just for good measure. I mean, definitely like what you can do is that if you want a normal get up, normal get up like towards the end of it. Like, cause you do have invincible frames on get up. Right, so, right, exactly. So if you do it towards the end, yeah, yeah. If, if you time it towards like the end of the fire, like you can normal get up and not get hit by the fire. Yeah. Or even like, I don't suggest doing this, but if you do, if for some reason, if you're just like, yep, I'm normal get upping into this holy water, and you know you're gonna get hit by it because it's already active and you're actively choosing to normal get up into it, at least start smash the eye before you start getting hit by it. Right. <laughs> just start. I mean, just do that hard smash the eye up. Right, but like, still, I don't think you should just normal, normal get up get into up, an yeah. active don't, holy never, water. Yeah, never normal get up without a plan. Yeah. All right, Here so. Here we go into the beach, the gold outfit. Yeah. Okay, so we are on Town and City. Um, interesting, maybe the Kalos pick was banned. Maybe he doesn't feel like it's too good against Brazo, but nonetheless, we are going to see a different counter pick coming out from T3 Dome. We did see the Kalos come out a lot for him at, uh, oh. Ooh, but snipes him with that forward smash before he can snap ledge. Oh, dang. Well, that's that's one way to get the stock, right? Just right. the call outs, man. And maybe that will definitely give uh, T3 Dome the confidence he needs because Going out in a game, getting three stocks is not the biz, but oh, oh that's, but that's so nice. And there's the, there's the stitch face too. 
I like how they made it so Stitch Face is always on the side that's like towards the player. Right, so yeah, you know he has Stitch Face. Right, right. <laughs> the other games, Peach could definitely hide that. <laughs> oh, oh, I think it's the juggle. Yeah. Now Sunshine and Rainbows is not going to be enough to slay the Demon Slayer. Yeah, but it's, it's enough to get 61%, man. Right. And I, I like the stall, too, with the float. He, like, floated for a little bit, then he up aired. But, wow, that was almost your stock. Around 80%, man. And that that's honestly what T3 Dome has to do. He's got he's got to get these solid reads. Because right now, Razo is definitely making it count, especially offstage. Ooh, tried waiting out the, the, the toe, but unfortunately, he's not going to wait long enough. It gets hit by the spores. Wow, that, that move is very good in this matchup, man. Wow. For how long that Toad is active for and how long the scores are active for, like, and the range on that move, too? Like, yeah. dang. Because pretty much Belmonts are just consistently oppressing you with these very long, disjointed hitboxes. So you can kind of, like, know when they're going to throw it out. But there goes Razo hipping and hopping right over all these aerials and getting the forward air, man. And I like to just point out, Razo pulled out a Saturn, too. Like, this is... Like, yeah. Second Saturn in the set? No, second time he's pulled both a Stitch Face and a Saturn in, like, tonight, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very great avoidance of all these projectiles and even the up as well. Razo is playing so damn good right now. Oh, there's a miss up B and the, no. Oh, he wanted Nair, for oh. sure. But, I mean, he gets he managed to recover that punish a little bit. Right, right, right. But, like, instead of the fair, if he nared and then recall turn up, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Ooh, there, there was, like, at least, like, 44% he could have gone in. But, like, yeah. he managed to recover. After that. But he gets the good catch on that side B into the up air. Yeah, that, that was very, very clean. You, you got to be able and you got to be ready as a Belmont player to react off those returning cross. Because even at that super high percent, we saw him confirm it into the up air. Like, that's absurd. No lag if you jump with that side beam and stuff. Ooh, and the parry into grab. Very clean stuff from Razo. Oh, well, not going for the bear, unfortunately. And yeah, it looks like he was trying to call out a jump. Right. Oh, gets the down tilt, and oh, he wanted that bear to end the stock, but gets a side beam instead. You know, at 156%, you no, know, all he just needs is that one hit. Yeah, and oh, there's there the back is. area. Yeah, yeah man. man, there we go. Razo takes it uh, Wednesday night fights. Very clean stuff from Razo. I really want to point out how Razo is utilizing the side B to get to the ledges faster. Like, he'll hit him cross stage, and then he'll jump side B just so he can get to the ledge in time to go for his ledge trap. And right. go, like, using the side B, the lagless side B in the air is so, so good. And just for, like, straight positioning to, like, push your advantage states in certain situations, like, right. very, very underrated. I mean, Razo just played the matchup extremely well. Yes. You know, he know yes. the, the turnip snipes, you know, the punishes on all the... Uh, T3 Dome's like aerials, uh, when, yes. knowing when to counter everything. With we the saw toad. the parries and the toad. Like right. the fact that he knows that it's very hard to punish Belmont's just out of shield regularly because of the range and how disjointed everything is, right? right. So he was utilizing the toad, he was utilizing the parries. Obviously, two things are, are a little bit more committal, but you gotta kinda take that risk against the Belmont's and be very good at that, or you're just gonna get withered out. Right. I mean, he definitely was able to capitalize on all of his advantages. You no, know, and his advantage stay, his like edge guarding. His edge guarding was like so immaculate because like it really forced T3 Dome to you know like utilize his best recoveries too. You know, and even at his best, he still got sniped out. Exactly. Know? Yeah, and we didn't see him normal get up into any holy water. Right. Very impressive. Uh, it. I mean, I I say that now, kind of like. I'm not dogging on anyone that normal gets up into holy water. I know it's definitely, it can be tilting and hard just playing in tournament against Belmont. Right. So definitely no one can play perfect. But oh, yeah. it, I definitely feel like I still, like we're pretty far into like the meadow. You know Where, what I like, mean? You should avoid that. You, you should definitely, I feel like maybe the first four months or something, I can I should be seeing that a lot. But I feel like we're at month like seven now. Right. Come on guys. Come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. So definitely good things on Razo. Uh, that is going to be the end of the night. So yeah. why don't we send it off? I am Kohai Tempo. You can follow me at SSB underscore Tempo. I am 2GG Korean. Uh, what's my Twitter? At GSM K0REAN. There we go. Right. <laughs> and we will send it later. So send it to the skies.